guys. Thanks everyone for joining. I'm, I'm James Cox. I'm the uh, director of platform uh, business development for, for Network Optics. Um, and joining us today for our Works with NX webinar is Security360 and Raina from Security360. And hopefully shortly, Frederick uh, will also be joining us who's just been caught up um, on, on something else uh, before we can jump in. Um, Security360 are one of our partners that we've been working with, especially for our initiative around our remote monitoring. Um, they've developed a really cool box that um, is super high accuracy uh, in terms of uh, filtering out a lot of false alarms um, for kind of an alarm and perimeter management system. Um, but one of the really cool things from the network optics side is their box. Um, you can remotely deploy network optics from the through Security 360 cloud to their box uh, at the edge, at the click of a button. And you can pick whatever version you want to as well. So uh, from, from a network optics geek point of view, it is super cool because you can just have a box that's at someone's site that doesn't have our platform installed, click a button, and it will deploy it to the edge um, via their cloud solution. Um, so for remote monitoring solutions for us, obviously they, they do a lot more than just remote monitoring, but um, for us, like it fits really well with our remote monitoring initiative in terms of uh, being able to roll boxes out that have our platform embedded and have a high level of uh, AI that can basically filter out all the, the false alerts and basically increase accuracy and reduce the amount of um, false alerts through to remote monitoring centers and things like that. Um, but I won't try and steal the light too much and, and talk too much about your product. Uh, so Rana, if I hand it over to you, I will let you kick off, uh, do your introductions and um, yeah, I'll let you get going. Okay, thank you, James. Thank you everyone also for joining. Um, we are very grateful we can do this webinar together with Network Optics and we are excited to share with you what Secure360 is doing right now. So the main question is why Security 360? Well, if you just look globally, um, burglary is still a big issue today. Um, we can see like we are centered now, uh, we are a Belgian company, but um, as we just look in Europe, there are about 3,288 burglaries per day in the US, it's even more South Africa as well. So it's still an issue today. And if we just look at the numbers, um, burglary, burglars take about two to four minutes to break in. That's not a lot of time. And the average time of a burglary inside is about three minutes. So just it's a, very limited time just, to- Just real quick, Rana, sorry, your, your slide's not updated. It's still on the, the front slide. I don't know if it's supposed to have changed. Frederick is here by now as well, so he will Take over. You will take over. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the oh, slides, sure. for, for me anyway, the slide's not updated. Uh, I will hand it over. There you go. Why, now, now, it's, now it's updated. It might have just frozen. Um, so now, now Frederick has, has managed to, to, to get here. I'll, uh, I'll do a quick introduction to Frederick. So Frederick is the, uh, the founder and director of, of, uh, of Security 360. So I'll hand over to, to Frederick now to, to continue. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, James. Um, hi, I'm Frederick Jacobs, um, CEO and founder of Security 60. Security 60 um, was started almost five years ago. Uh, me, myself, I'm for 15 years in the camera industry. And we found out there was not a solution for the fit of the product that we needed. So we started Security 60 ourselves. So why the Security 60 exists? So um, if you look at the numbers, like in Europe, we have more than 3,000 burglaries every day. In the United States, we have almost 5,000 burglaries every day. In South Africa, also almost 4,000 burglaries every day. And we're still placing a lot of alarm systems that are too late, to my opinion. So somebody breaks in and then the alarm is triggered. So insurance companies are losing, um, the owner is losing, so everybody is losing a lot. So we really thought, okay, we need to do it differently. So we started Security 60 with some main focuses. So uh, a burglar gets inside within three, two to four minutes. That's so the average time for a burglar to get inside is three minutes. So we really believe that we need to detect them and stop them in this first minute. And we need, so we believe a lot in pyramid detection. And of course, 
video is a revolution in security, so we focus a lot on existing cameras, cameras as well. So if we also have a pitch for ourselves, a short pitch, we're building like an alarm panel for existing cameras to detect the potential burner at the outside. So, uh, but we had some goals. So as my experience in the security market as well, so in the cabin security, we did, first we did search for products, um, but we didn't find a good fit. So when we started Security 60, we had a few different goals as well. So um, we don't want to have any calibration, so no calibration is needed on the camera side, and an easy setup. No firmware updates. So we build a product, we update all the boxes on location. You don't need to do a firmware, don't need to do a firmware update as an installer or a control room every two weeks, for example. Cloud-based storage, I think it's important if you got you got motion detection, but you got also detections of a potential burglar and the clips that we are making, it needs to be stored in the cloud. That's our focus. And remote support. So um, technicians. It's a hard breed to find, uh, if I, uh, to my experience. So remote support, doing everything remotely in our cloud platform is also some of the key um, uh, goals that we had to start the product. Um, so um, me and two co-founders started a Security 60 a few years ago, came from an ID. Um, uh, Bart is a CTO and he, um, yeah, he built the architecture. Wojtek um, is um, also a guy who's very busy in AI, and myself, I'm for 15 years in security to see, so we started the company uh, together. Uh, oh, that's a little bit fast. So, um, so we have some different, I think we have two challenges in the uh, in pyramid detection. It's the false detections, and it's also the usage of the system. So uh, you're walking around in your own secured area, and the alarm is triggered, for example. Uh, the gardener, the mail guy, the cleaning lady, for example. Because pyramid detection, you need to activate and deactivate the system at the right time. So uh, for the 90% accuracy, I will show you how we do it. But uh, together, we also build different technologies to um, activate and deactivate our system quite easily. Um, so yeah, at this moment, uh, most of our, our products or installations are always with a with a physical fence around it, but our focus is to be on more open locations as well with this different technology to, to activate and deactivate our system as well. We'll show it to you later. Um, so actually it starts with um, the cameras on location. So at the left uh, the image, so it starts with the cameras on location, the stream getting in the box. The box uh, has an edge AI that's very sensitive to not miss any detection. So the first AI is running on the box on location. So we always place box on location of ourselves. And then you get a cloud AI that is running. And we have different integrations with the control rooms. But our cloud AI is filtering out the false detections. It's quite strict. So we have like a two-way authentication. So the box very sensitive, the cloud very strict. And that's why we have a very accurate system as an outcome to send to control rooms, send to the mobile app, or trigger the alarm location. But the cloud AI is training the box on location as well. So the stream, so left up, so the stream getting in the box on location, the box is filtering out, it's like, let's say it's like 80% in the beginning. Our cloud will filter out the next part um, and uh, sending it with a very high accuracy to a control room, to our own mobile app, or we can trigger the alarm location that there is a potential burglar inside. But it doesn't stop there. Our cloud AI will train the box on location as well. So everything what the cloud is filtering out, it's getting trained on the box on location. So the box is getting smarter and smarter on location itself. Yeah, and then we got some, some results. Um, so we think every day almost we are stopping potential burglars. So here somebody is it's climbing an electric fence as well, so our camera picked up, detected. Here as well, also somebody who tries to steal something, but we detect it as well as here. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of examples where we, in a very early stage, detect a potential burglar and um, by a siren or a control room or the police on location, uh, we can uh, scare them off before they do any damage.
Okay, then we got uh, uh, our integration part. So um, from the camera side, we support any kind of camera. Uh, if it's the camera not supported, we can just integrate it. So that's that's not the issue. Actually, we're just using the RGSP stream here in the second stream. So as a resolution that we need is uh, the minimum is 640 by 480. It's coming in the box on location. Uh, but as an outcome, we also support different platforms. So uh, Image, Network Optics, C Additional Online, some different others. To send the images to a VMS or send it to a control room, we support different uh, platforms as well. Um, for the um, for the event side for Network Optics, so we have two integrations made with Network Optics, um, so two different uh, issues, two different things. So we we can send the events like events rules to Network Optics as well, but we also can run Network Optics on our box on location. So we build our own hardware to do the detection. We can also run Network Optics to it. So um, first of all, events sent over to Network Optics, but also run the hardware on the location itself. So the box itself, you can see it here. So like I told you, so we build our own hardware. You're using, of course, we are using NVIDIA GPU, um, but we're building our own hardware. It's also manufactured in Belgium. Um, and um, we have uh, yeah, some explanations. So we have two network ports. We have different in and outputs. Uh, we give five years warranty on the box itself. We can go up to six cameras. We're also building a box that supports more cameras, but today it's up to six cameras. We can have, of course, unlimited boxes on the same location as well. We have different in and outputs uh, uh, activate, act, active on our box. So an input is to activate or arm and disarm the system mainly. Um, and the, um, the outputs are mainly to trigger a siren, trigger an alarm, or things like that. That's an output. Uh, we have different connections, so we have different mounting options as well. Um, we have a low power consumption. Um, we are losing like 12 watts with a hard drive in it, so it's quite low. And a low bandwidth, so up to 2 gigabytes of upload per month with three cameras. That's approximately the thing. Uh, and we have the VMS option. So, uh, that, what I explained before, so we can run the VMS that we got on the hardware itself. So in our cloud port, you can just select, okay, this is also an NX installation. You push for a cloud NX on the box itself, and on the bottom, you have a hard drive option, so you get like a detection tool and a VMS running on the same hardware device. Um, yeah, then the, the activation and deactivation part, so the arming and disarming is quite important. I've showed it before uh, with, this, with the mountain that we have. Um, so uh, we can do it with the scheduling. So the scheduling can be used in the mobile app or in the partner portal. That you could just okay from that day to that day, from that hour to that hour, need to be active. You get app activation, so we can make different partitions, and you can just manually activate and deactivate. We have geofencing; it's uh, recently launched. So uh, if you walk around with your cell phone in the area, it's getting activated and deactivated uh, at the same time. We will work always with a. Um, a push notification, so you need to do it manually, but you can also set up uh, an extra authentication like your face recognition. So you get this geofencing, the manually, and you also do the face recognition, and then the system gets turned on and off again. Else, when your cell phone gets stolen, for example, the system can be, uh, yeah, somebody can break in quite easily. Um, and on the, on the other part of geofencing, you can also do it on the user base. So in our partner portal, you can just set up different users. Uh, so not every user of the mobile app that is getting the images and getting the texts is allowed to activate and deactivate the geofencing mode, for example. So you can just set it up on the user base. And then the API integration. So um, if you're using another platform where you do the scheduling, for example, we can just use the API to activate and deactivate. Or you can also use the inputs as an activation. I think this is most mainly used until now. It's connected to your alarm system, your burglar system, or your access control system to activate and deactivate your box on location. Um, then you get the customer management portal. So like I told you, it's, it's a cloud-based system. So all the management is done in our cloud, not on the location itself. So the only thing that you do on the box itself is like, set up the IP address, for example, and set up different uh, the IOs. But every all, all the rest is done through a cloud portal remotely. OK, and then we got the, the mobile app. Uh, so it's mainly focused. OK, I will show uh, the video clip of the mobile app. So it's uh, you get the live streams in the mobile app. So you can see all the live streams. You can also uh, focus.
this uh, or do a full screen. Then you get the logs of the system, so all the logs you're logging in, but you can also select own cameras or own detection, for example. Now I'm searching through detection. So if there is a detection on site, we make a 10 second video clip like, like I showed you, and we send it through as a push notification, but you can also watch them back for 30 days. Here you can see some examples, for example, of detections far away or more closely. And then the activation part, like I showed you, you can have like different partitions can set up. Uh, so the arming can be done on different partitions. But you can also have a scheduling mode on the box itself, on the total installation, or a scheduling mode on different partitions as well. So it's the same as in the work uh, And then the last part is the geofencing part. So just click on that dot and you can just put in the address or just go to the home address where you're active, for example, and activate the geofencing. You can say, okay, within 200 meters, 500 meters, or a few kilometers, for example, if I walk in the neighborhood with my cell phone, the system will be activated. Or you can have manually um, set up your address as well. Okay, then, um, yeah, as an overview, so cameras around the property is getting into the box on location. You have different functions to activate and deactivate our system. We have an edge AI and a cloud AI running, who's teaching each other. We have a partner portal to manage everything. And as an outcome, we can send it to a control room. We can send it to the mobile app as a push notification, or we can trigger an alarm or a siren or lightning on location as well. Yeah, it's the same overview. So uh, we are active, so we uh, are based in Belgium. We have a software team in Belgium. We develop the product and also produce and manufacture the hardware in Belgium. Um, so um, like I told you, we want to have the, the total solution. So I think uh, we have a lot of AI companies with a lot of functions. We, we try to be in the space of potential burglary detection, but we build our own hardware, own software, own platform own AI and also the mobile app and all the integration with the company to really focus on that. And um, yeah, step by step getting active in different parts uh, of the world. Um, so how do we work? Uh, so we have our um, model. So we have a hardware device. We have a license per camera per month. We sell it through distribution. Uh, and uh, customers of ours, we have a control room uh, model. We have an installer model. and those are going to the end users as well. If we check at our customer base at this moment, 25 to 30 percent are uh, residential uh, homes, and uh, 70 percent 70 percent are uh, small to medium-sized businesses at this moment. And the biggest uh, project that we have is mainly solar plants um, that are having 60 to 100 cameras to uh, detect or, or watch their 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 product itself. So um, yeah, for the for the price, uh, for the retail price, but we have uh, 1,000 euros for the box itself, and the monthly fee for the camera, the retail price is not as 10 euros per month per camera. It's also with the 30 days recordings, for the cloud, for that, everything is in that price. We have, of course, different um, um, levels of discounts depending on the, the reseller or the distributor or the control group. So some customers that we have, uh, car dealerships, they have a lot of false detections from lightnings, um, uh, things like that. Also, it needs to be sensitive enough because, yeah, a person needs to be detected within the cars or between the cars. So it's a, it's a sensitive uh, system. So uh, we had some customers, they had a lot of false detections, uh, yeah, high cost on the control room side. Uh, this was a project connected to security desk. All the false detections need to be paid because the security was handling everything. Uh, so um, high cost. So the solution was filtering out the false detections, and also the installer was quite happy with the, the easy installations. Um, you can also find this is a OD car dealership, different plants in all of Belgium. Um, they're quite happy with it. You can also find the reference cases on the website. But um, the used to have two to three false alarms every week, and yeah, we made it almost zero. We're quite happy. Uh, construction site companies as well. So here you can see also an example 
the tactical potential burger at the at the container at the back. So um, also um, a lot of false detections, a lot of uh, missed detections as well. If you're using camera AI uh, sometimes, also the activation part. So now construction sites are using like for different um, app users, they can use a geofencing mode, for example. So it's also somebody's working on Saturday, for example, the code room doesn't know, so it's getting a lot of human detections coming in. So the geofencing mode, he's just entering in the morning, it's getting turned off, he's uh, applying to it, and then it's not sending to the code room anymore. So it's not, uh, uh, they're in a false detection because it's a human, but um, he can still work on a Saturday and not having a lot of false detection centers. Yeah, also um, one of the installers of mobile security units is also quite happy when it found out uh, our security six installation. And then we have a lot of solar panel block parks. Um, large spaces um, are focused on thermal cameras a lot, but we have some downsides with thermal cameras. I think it's as when it's very hot, the price of thermal cameras uh, also a counter room has no uh, still needs normal cameras to see what's happening on, on, on the site. So we are mainly focused on optical cameras. We do support thermal cameras as well, but if we see, I think it's 85 to 90% of the, of the project, it's optical cameras with separate lighting mainly. So uh, this is uh, a camera with infrared spots uh, on it as well. Also a reference case of uh, one of the customers who are using solar panels. Um, so yeah, why are installers using uh, Security 60? Yeah, the easy installation. You also um, you also will see the, the setup of the, the calibration. So if we set up the area, uh, it will be much more easy. You can show it to your live uh, later on the Parker portal. Um, the remote updates and the reliable AI. Also some different um, installers. And then Code Room is also quite happy with our product because of the pulse alarm filtering out and the easy integration. They see it like a plug and play system to send over to a customer, just having the cameras on it and uh, get them integrated with their control room as well. Okay, that's about uh, uh, the presentation as well. I can still uh, share my screen and uh, show you um, the partner portal live to you that you can see it, but if you have already any questions for me, then you can uh, just ask in the chat. Uh, I don't think we have any questions yet, uh, Frederick, so feel free to, to jump into the, the demo of the system, and then okay. uh, we will see if any questions come now, over it. Now, you've, now you've prompted them. Okay, perfect. Just why, uh, while Frederick's getting that set up, um, if anyone wants to ask any questions now, feel free. Um, from our side, I think it's a, it's a really nice end-to-end -end solution uh, that, that covers a whole bunch of use cases. Um, but as I was saying, for, for us, we're, we're, we're seeing as a really good, strong play uh, into like the um, the the uh, remote monitoring sector. All right, you've got it running now, perfect. Yeah, perfect, thanks, James. Um, so, uh, share my screen. So, um, 
as an installer, control room, you get the login of our partner portal. At the partner portal, you will see, um, um, first you will see an overview of all your clients, all the installed boxes, and uh, the art boxes at this moment. So at night, for example, it needs to be, yeah, um, needs to be uh, yeah, 12 or 12. Um, and then we get uh, 23 cameras connected as well. Um, device state overview tells us the detection. Uh, so the device state, sorry, the, the health check of the system as well. So if we click on it, we see here that we have some boxes are disconnected. So they have no internet connection. Normally, of course, need to be green. This is a demo account, but you can see it here. So we, choose, we do three things when the box is disconnected or the camera is disconnected as well. So we can send an email to the installer. We can update the status on this overview, and we can also send it to the control rooms. So we have health checks and pinging polling tests integrated with the control room platforms as well. So the control room will know when there's something wrong with the system. Um, then if you go uh, below, we can see all the detections that are made. So the human detections and the false detections. So if you're using camera AI, so we have different two different options. So we have camera AI or our or own edge AI. If you're using camera AI, it will also show you what our cloud filtered out from the camera AI as well. You can see it in an overview, or you can see it day by day. So you can see on the 10, for example, we had a lot of false detections. If we scroll down here, we can also hover on it, you can select it. So this week, all person detections, if we hover on it, we can see the detections as well at the office, for example. So a periodic office, um, if we go to the false detections, you can also hover on it and you can see that this customer and this camera has all the false detections. So you can see um, quite fast which customers are having a lot of false or human detections on site. Then you get the overview of all your clients as well. So um, all the end user clients, if I expand all, click the expand all button, you can also see the pictures. So what we're doing in daytime, so every day, uh, at one and every night at one, we take a picture of our installation. So we, we are uh, building like an AI function to detect scene change, but you can also do it manually. So if I go, for example, here, one day before, I can see that um, the picture in a day and night at time. So if I scroll down, I can see for different customers all the pictures that I made on the installation as well. So you can see quite easily if something wrong with the camera. Here we can obviously see there is like a lightning blinding the camera, so it needs to be fixed to do a good pyramid detection. Then collapse all. So um, if I go into uh, one side, for example, I'll do this customer. Um, so um, end user details will be put in here. Then we got the boxes on location uh, here. So um, so we built everything in Microsoft Azure IoT platform. So this cloud-based system. Um, is the only thing you need to do all the credentials, but to add a box on location or to add a new box, you can just put in the serial number, and these are the serial numbers that will be activated on your account. You can find the serial number on the box itself, and if you activate it, you're working on the box itself. Which option that we now have? We have a camera config mode. So if you don't have an NVR on site or network optics, for example, on site, you can also use our box to make like a VPN tunnel between the laptop or my PC and the camera direct to go into the camera directly. Just put in the config mode. And then you get all the settings of the box itself. So you can copy the cameras, make partitions, and the I.O. configuration. So I'll, I'll just show this one. So uh, we can make partitions on cameras or on zones. So you can have one camera with different zones, and the different zones are working differently from each other, for example. So we can have like partition one. He has a delay of 30 seconds. So you can walk around for 30 seconds to activate or deactivate your alarm by code, for example. Uh, or you can have also partition two, no delay, and an, another output will be triggered. So you can also trigger another output on a zone detection. For example, if you get a detection zone in the backyard, the lightning in the backyard needs to be activated, not uh, the siren at the front door, for example. And you go to next, and you can see here um, all the IOs. So we have a box on location. Here we have the IOs itself. So you can just activate and deactivate. Just say, okay, this is the, the output two, output three. This is the analog output, for example. You can also use it like that. Okay, uh, we'll close it. 
Um, then we have some extra settings as well. So, um, so here we choose if we're using the Edge AI or the Camera AI. We can choose for broad, broadband connection or 4G connection. If you're using 4G connection, you are using less bandwidth. So at this moment, the box has doesn't has a 4G route in, inside, but the next version that will be launched in a few months, we will have also 4G uh, um, option inside. So you can just put in a SIM card and have also a 4G backup if the internet um, is failing, for example. If you're now like the 4G, we are losing less bandwidth, like, like I told you. Um, and then the NX integration, what I talked about, it's uh, um, quite a good solution, I guess, I think, because we can, you can just use our hardware and run NX and our AI on the same device. Just select NX here, you can just choose the last version and format the hard drive of the box on location. And then we will push network optics on the box itself, format the hard drive, and you get your VMS system NX running on the same hardware device as well. Um, you can trigger the output module to test anything. You can restart the module. You can deploy the latest module. But if you do any changement, there will be a, a red, a red uh, screen, so you, you can't miss it. Or you can also delete the box as well. If you edit the box, you can also add the cameras here. So if you want to add the cameras, just put in the name, select the brand that needs to be done. For example, access camera. Uh, select the stream. You're also always using the substream. Enter the IP address, the port number, and username and password, and the camera will be coming in. If the camera is active, so the active state, of course, this is also the invoicing state. So when the camera is active, the monthly fee starts. And it's quite flexible as well. So if you don't use the camera anymore, you can just um, um, have this uh, on non-active or inactive, and then the invoicing, the monthly invoicing also stops. But when it's active, you can also set up the, the zones as well, so the detection zones. So here, for example, I'll do it again. So uh, having zones is just entering the area here, having a partition one, add a group, for example. Having partition two, for example. So if you're using different partitions, like here, partition two, no delay. Partition one, they had a delay of 30 seconds. I can also choose for vehicle detection and person detection. So you can just set it up like that. So that's about it. So you don't need any calibration, no sensitivity levels, no cross lines, no um, difficult um, setting up. Uh, and yeah, the, why we can do it? Because we're using this two-way authentication. You have the box and the cloud who's, who's running. Um, the AI detection, and that's why we have an easy installation and still a very accurate system to do the detection. Okay, um, we have a checklist built in, so every installation has like a checklist just for the technicians. When you um, put on the cameras, put on the box on location, set everything up, then you can have like an like an overview and say, okay, do you have UPS connected? Do you have an internet backup? The first walking that's done. Um, so just some information for yourself to, to think about everything for a good pyramid translation. And then you get the picture. So I told you, so we are taking every day and night a picture. So you got like the first picture on the installation. You can take it here. So if you set up everything and before you leave the installation, you can just select this and you, you'll generate the first pictures of all the cameras. So after a year, you need to do some support, you come back to the installation, you still see, okay, the cameras are still mounted at the same direction, the same angle as I do the installation in one year ago. And then you got this uh, ground plan. So if you, um, of course, you do like a, a, a Google map function and you just uh, set up all your cameras, you can also upload the, the plan as well. Um, we're now building our own tool to do that. So um, the detection ranges at this moment, we say, okay, 30 pixels per meter on a two megapixel camera, or 100, 180, 180 degrees angle, it's like 45 meters, up to 220 meters with a 10 angle uh, lens, so depending on the lens, uh, of course. But we're now building like a, um, like a platform to just um, also have a Google Maps integration and also put the cameras on the location that you can see, okay, this is the distance that we can detect. Now you have the logs of the system. So in the logs, you can see all the activation, deactivation, logins, things like that. And then 
we have the integration part. So, um, <clears throat> for example, at Redoptic, if we want to send the event, so the 10 second video clip with bounding box to Network Optics, you can just put in here the username, password, and also do the health checks, for example. And when the box is disconnected, I want to send an event to NX, that's a possibility. But besides NX, we have different integrations. So, for example, NX, <clears throat> if you're using Securitas, they're using MX, G4S, the same thing. If you're using Control Room, who's using CIA Decent Online, for example, you can just select CIA Decent Online. Having different um, um, credentials that you get from your control room, and also do the heartbeat, for example. Uh, every 24 hours, I will do a heartbeat send over to the control room. If you set up everything here, you can do a test, but the best test is, of course, to walk around and see all the cameras get the detection with image in the control room, and then you, need, you know that it's set up. Last thing is the API integration. So, I, I, so in the first um, slide, I told you that you can activate and deactivate also through an API integration. So for example, if you're using like a scheduling mode in your VMS system, you can just shoot the scheduling mode here and get this API integration to set up everything. Uh, for example, we have some uh, customers, they have like mobile security units on construction sites, but they have their own control room. And the security guard is able to activate and deactivate our software to their own uh, platform in their control room. Uh, and then accounts. So you can also set up different accounts. So um, if I want to add an account here, first name, last name, email address, and then uh, say, okay, it's an installer, it's a sales guide, or it's the end user client. He's also using the mobile app, for example, and he has multiple sites. You can just select the multiple sites here, and then he will get, he has the ability to see all the multiple sites, getting a push notification in his mobile app, and also doing the geofencing on different locations. Uh, you can also give some access for the end user to the partner portal. I only recommend it when you have like an end user of a lot of different sites, and they have like a security, um, guy who's monitoring everything, so you can also set up, for example, they can do the scheduling and they can do some changes in the scheduling as well, and the rest they can't do. So you can have different um, functions uh, for the department. Yeah, and then the last thing what I want to show you, so um, in the partner portal, we, we try to put in everything there. If you also, if you are a control room, there is also like a shop function to order the hardware uh, devices or to get the hard device is shipped to your, your customers or to your installers as well. Uh, but we also have like a training. So videos, documentation, release notes, frequently asked questions, everything is in the partner portal and also the marketing team. So if you get a login to the partner portal, if you are a partner, you can use our, uh, our video clips, our logo, our, our white papers. They can also always be downloaded in the partner portal as well. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the presentation of the partner portal, the, the technical parts. Do ask anybody some questions uh, on that? Let's see if we've had any questions come in. One of the, uh, one of the things I really like with your, uh, your UI design is um, how you actually represent the IOs in the box. And, like, it, it makes it a lot more logical, right, when you're, like, seeing them together rather than just listing them you actually like draw a diagram of the box um yeah. we have a question from ron uh which is how are detections sent to control rooms oh so the detections are sent to the control rooms uh, so what, what we do is we make a 10 second video clip and we send an url uh, through the sia protocol for example if you use sia there's a URL sent, the control room gets a URL, clicks on it, and it sees a 10 second video clip. 10 second video clip, the pre and post detection. Perfect. So that 10 second video clip is, is where it hosted on your cloud layer, right? So it all routes through your cloud. Yeah. Yeah, correct. So Edge AI runs to the cloud, and that is getting sent to the control room as well. Yeah. Perfect. We have also a, a second option if you're using C additional line at this moment. So you can also have. Um, you get the 10 second video clip and the live streams next to each other. It's also an, an option that we can, can have. So you can choose which one you use. Perfect. 
Uh, that was the only question thus far. Um, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to to ask them. Um, we'll just uh, we'll we'll be wrapping up shortly, but we'll give it uh, a few more minutes just to see if anyone else has any questions. Um, we had a decent amount of people on, so I guess maybe you just did a really good presentation that answered all their questions uh, straight away. Yeah. But uh, hopefully that's the case, right? Um, yeah. For um, obviously you 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 connect with uh, with alarm systems, right? Is it is it using the dry contacts only to connect with alarm systems, or do you support yeah. any alarm system protocols as well? No, at this moment it's indeed um, only the, the dry contacts. Uh, we didn't integrate uh, until now. Um, yeah, we started up a few years ago, and and we 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 wanted to focus on that. But after all, most installers are placing our box next to their alarm panel, making the contact. So integration would be uh, better, I guess. But still, yeah, we, we don't get that many questions, and especially because we are building a lot of functions like an alarm panel ourselves, like the geofencing, scheduling mode. So the box is getting more use standalone than in combination with, the, with an alarm panel. So. So we didn't focus on that. Uh, got you, got you. We had a, a couple of people who raised their hands. Um, it, we don't do uh, audio questions. So if anyone has a question, just um, please use the, the question box uh, in the app and then just type your question for me. Um, it's usually easier than trying to get other people to connect their microphones and have more technical issues than we already had today. Um, so uh, please uh, just feel free to type a question if you have one. Um, no, it makes a lot of sense. So you, I've I've seen from your like marketing and things that eventually you want to get to the like, the the point where you you don't even have to uh, arm or disarm the system, right? Is like your 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 end goal ideally. Yeah, our end goal is really set and forget function. So we call it our autopilot. Uh, we're not sure when we can do it. So because the architecture is built that we train every box on location automatically through our cloud. We, we do believe that we can train the box location in the future. What is normal behavior and what is abnormal behavior? Uh, so, uh, for example, um, is getting at home between five and six, for example, every evening. Um, sometimes she's running around. But what we never saw on this occasion is that at 2 p.m., two persons are coming in the backyard, for example. That can be abnormal uh, behavior. And we are it's kind of like the it's kind of like the um, the Nest thermostat system, right? That came out where it like learns your pattern so it knows how to heat your house. It's a uh, it's similar but for alarms, right? So it'll like start to learn behavioral patterns and then figure yeah. out anomalies. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, but we see it also like uh, it will be like. Uh, combination with a control room, because before we could use 100% standalone, of course, we couldn't uh, I think we couldn't take the risk for us breaking in because we, we, we learned the pattern wrong. So uh, first stage, I think we need to go to control rooms and say, okay, we're quiet because they get a lot of alarms in, uh, but maybe prioritize. Okay, prior one, because we never saw this, uh, this, this behavior around this building, or prior three, for example, because we see it every day. So I think there's something wrong with, with the activation and deactivation of the system as well. But we try to build this, of course, this mode already with the geofencing mode to just walk around and just get it activated and deactivated quite easily. Cool. So uh, we have a couple of questions um, that came in. So one from, I'm going to mess the name up, I'll try it, uh, Joy De Ruta. Um, any distributors known for the Netherlands? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we have uh, one distributor started up um, in the uh, area of Amsterdam. Uh, we are talking with one extra distributor, uh, but but feel free to send an inquiry and we can still uh, still look into that. Yeah. Perfect. Um, next question: Can you connect multiple secure uh, systems to one 360 box? Uh, example: small warehouse units. Not sure if I understand the question, but you can have, uh, you can have several boxes on one location and build it like one system. Um, I'm not sure what what this meaning with several security systems connected to a box. You can you have unlimited cameras, of course, if you got enough boxes on the location. Uh, yeah, I think it's either yeah multiple cam multiple boxes on one location, or potentially if you're running network optics on the box, right, and you're running a certain amount of cameras for 
external cameras, um, then you might also have a different system for all your internal cameras, and they can merge together, right? Um, your uh, the the server running on your box and a non 360 server, effectively, um, which I don't see an issue. That's more of a network optics uh, connectivity. Um, yeah. And there is no no limitation of, of 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 that part. So you you can also have like two bo like at my place I have four cameras connected, four cameras recording on network optics, and one camera is connected to security sixty. So two systems don't need to be the same amount of cameras connected to security three sixty and network optics. Because of course perimeter detection will not do it on the internal camera, for example. So you can just have recording on network optics and just do the detection on one or two cameras. Got it. Perfect. Um, any uh, any UK distributors? That, that this is another question that came in. Any UK distributors? <clears throat> um, we are uh, in contact with two, and uh, yeah, almost starting up them. Uh, so it's uh, so yeah, we, we think we focused on the UK uh, like six months ago, and just already talking to to two of them, and uh, yeah, we're almost in the starting up phase. Yeah, I saw I saw Frederick at the uh, <clears throat> at both. Uh, both the recent shows and the security event and uh, IPSEC and um, Frederick is always extremely busy at both those shows because there's a lot of interest around his product. So it's always uh, it's always good to see uh, when new products are really like taken well into the market. So um, I can tell you now he's gonna be he's gonna be busy in the UK. That's for sure. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, a lot of tracks in the UK. Yeah, it's good. That's good. Um, cool. Uh, any any other questions? Um, feel free to ask away. Uh, we'll um, we'll wrap it up in the next couple of minutes. Um, if no more questions come in, um, any any other last comments from yourself, uh, Frederick? Any uh, to that you want to let the, the audience know? Uh, no, um, I think uh, Security Sixty is really built to do. To do security differently, to do it more, uh, more accurate, more proactive, and uh, yeah, building, uh, building a very neat and new platform for the security market, uh, together with, of course, uh, uh, network optics and, and other um, uh, very important uh, products in the market. So, uh, so if you have any inquiry, uh, we are happy to to, to discuss uh, further. Cool, perfect. Um, we'll be uploading this video on YouTube. Um, oh, another question came in. Hold on one second. Uh, have you experienced any challenges when designing the system, and how did you overcome them? So, do you see? Have you ha have you hit any potential issues yet when you're like implementing these systems, or control rooms have been implementing the system, and you've like what's your strategy for? Obviously, being a newer company, you're not as We'll say fully featured as some of the the older existing companies out there. So, do you have like a way to kind of like adapt to specific needs and stuff, especially as you're changing between new markets and things? Yeah, I think so. Uh, first of all, we focus on have our own development team in house, so we can so from the mobile app developer to the hardware designer, we have our internal team. So it's quite important to to have it locally. And what we see sometimes, for example, with control rooms like the CIDs online protocol, everybody's using it, but to get the URL in their system, it's like a control room thing. So, so getting fast enough is sometimes uh, getting blocked by yeah, older platforms that, that control rooms are using. Um, but we try to, to adapt all the time. So if there is a, so like we're quite active in South Africa, for example, but they're using mainly a totally different Common platform, so we, we build it ourselves. So, so if there is any stop on, on sales, we try to adapt and, and develop uh, develop uh, the system itself. So, uh, so yeah, by choosing for the for this Microsoft Azure IoT platform, uh, really did give us uh, a lot of uh, functions and a lot of focus to upgrade all the box locations. So we almost almost never have that that the box needs to come back. So if there is something wrong. We can fix it remotely, and that, that's that's a very big uh, big thing, of course. And we also focus now on the uh, on the network optics um, OEM part, uh, like for example, to to search the cameras directly in your network. Now we do it manually, so we are also search, seeing the the capabilities and the strong partnership with network optics to to develop us for to make it more easy and accessible to 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 different installers to install our product. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, all right, I'll, uh, I think um, that, that wraps us up 
uh, for for the hour. I uh, appreciate everyone's time. Thank you for turning up um, and thanks for attending. Uh, thank you for Security 360 to yourself, Frederick, and to to Rana for um, for for joining the the webinar and putting together a great presentation. Um, Frederick and I have been working together for, for quite a long time now, so um, over the last 12 to 18 months, I think, and um, we see a lot of good cooperation and collaboration in the market. So it's uh, it's always good to see companies kind of innovating and and, uh, and especially creating like usable end-to-end -end products. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that create products that just uh, are harder to like have a business case or business story around, whereas I think you guys have really put something together uh, there. So it's uh, it's great to see. Um, I'll let you. I'll have you for any final comments and goodbyes, and then uh, and then we'll, we'll 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 finish for the day. Also, thanks a lot, James, for hosting this. Uh, it's always a very good uh, cooperation in the every exhibition. It's a, it's a very nice time. And good leads and stock partnerships. I think we are doing it quite well on that part. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Um, we're going to close it down now. Uh, if anyone wants to watch the YouTube video, uh, we'll be uploading it within the next week or so. If anyone has any comments or wants to reach out, feel free to reach out to myself and I can put you in touch with Frederick and his team um, to find out more or get some pricing or anything. Um, and uh, we, I think we're, we, you'll be, uh, we'll be co-presenting um, on uh, the TSC show next year, right? I think you guys are on our booth um, as one of our, our partners, uh, just to show the, how much we work together, right? Yeah, correct, indeed. Perfect. All right. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, and uh, I hope everyone has a, has a good day. Thanks, Frederick. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.